So you're a medical student in Sioux Yeah, I am. Uh, no, actually, um, I'm in Brooklyn, South Dakota. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm, uh, I'm from your uh, name, I'm assuming you are from Middle East. Yeah, I am from the Middle East. Where are you from? Um, I'm from Egypt. Egypt? Yeah. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, I'm originally I'm Persian. Mm -hmm. So the, how did you end up in Brookings? Um, well, we, um, my dad, he found a good opportunity here. So we decided to move to Brookings. Um, what, does, what does your dad do? My dad, he, um, at Egypt, he used to be a professor. He taught chemistry there. And now he came here and he's working at South Dakota State University. Excellent, excellent. Well, so nice to meet you, Hazem. How do you pronounce your last name, your first name? My first name, Hazem. 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 Hazem, okay. So how can I help you, Hazem? What's, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask you a few questions. Um, Go ahead. About, yep, neurosurgeon. Um, what do you as a neurosurgeon recommend to someone that wants to become a neurosurgeon to major in minor in college? Well, if you're interested, uh, um, are you yourself interested in neurosurgery? Yeah, I am. So obviously biology is a very mm -hmm. important uh, uh, piece that you have to pick up in the mm -hmm. school and chemistry. Our body is a chemistry factory. Is very important, mm -hmm. but people underestimate how important physics is. Many of the things we do is physics. And uh, so biology, chemistry, physics is a pre-requirement, but I couldn't overemphasize uh, that you should as well take some, uh, some lessons, some courses in ethics, because uh, our body is made of a combination of biology, chemistry, physics, but uh, as well our psyche is extremely important and you have to deal with sick people, not with sick machines. So ethics yeah. is a big part of what you need to as well pick up in your school if you're interested in neurosurgery or medicine as general. Now, obviously, if you are specifically interested in neurosurgery, what I told you is for entire medicine, but if you're interested in neurosurgery, neurobiology is a good start. Um, okay, so in med school, is there a certain career path everyone must follow or do we get to choose? I tried to research that and I couldn't find the answer. Probably 75% of what you do in med school is uh, for everybody. Mm -hmm. But 25%, you have possibility to get uh, dive into one subject or another more. And that is sort of, uh, uh, um, I would uh, do suggest you don't go there too soon. First, let learn everything. Uh, be, don't go with the preset mind that this is what I'm going to do. That sort of will set you up to neglect things that you think that are less important to you. But those, those general knowledge is extremely important for anybody to have. So I would suggest to everybody, even if you, are, if you think you are set to learn one thing or another, Go with the open mind and let uh, everything come to you in the first, at least first two years of the med school. Um, okay. Um, what are some requirements of becoming a neurosurgeon, like license and schooling? Well, I think the most important thing to be a neurosurgeon is attitude in life. As one of the, when I was uh, a little older than you are, uh, and I talked to people who encouraged me to go to neurosurgery, um, they told me that neurosurgery is a wonderful life, but a horrible job, depending on how you are taking it. If you are taking it as a eight to five job, it's going to bear you down and destroy you. 
But if you take it as a way of life, if you don't mind to take care of the people at midnight, if you don't mind to literally dedicate your life and your body and your energy to this, it's a very rewarding, a wonderful life. But it's, it is a horrible job. So don't go to neurosurgery if you are just looking for a job. Go to neurosurgery if you are looking for a way of life. So after you got done with your med school, what, what is the residency like? What did you get to do? The residency is that exactly what we talked about. It's, you know, they used to call a resident resident for a reason. You would reside, you will be the resident of the hospital. You would be in the hospital. Now, these days they have moderate those uh, tendencies and people are not there 24 seven, but I used to work 120 hours a week in my residency. A week is 168 hours. I used to work 120 of that every week. Now they have reduced that to 80 hours and it's not as uh, intensive as uh, I went through that. But if, uh, again, if uh, you are looking for um, life work balance, neurosurgery is the wrong thing for you. You have to, if, but once your life and work are the same, 168 hours of the week are going to pass somehow anyways. If you are going to separate life and work, neurosurgery is not for you. But if you are willing to have it as a way of life, neurosurgery is extremely rewarding. Um, okay, so what is your favorite part about being a neurosurgeon? Like, is there anything really specific? You change so many people's life that I don't believe there are any other medical discipline that they would have so much impact on actual people's life. What we are is not our heart or our muscles or our hands. What we are is our brain, is our nervous system. And our entire body is a vessel to carry our body. And as a neurosurgeon, you work with what the essence of a human being is. There's nothing more noble than that. On average, like how many hours a week do you work? I don't know, I, because I don't care. Don't mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's definitely about 40 hours. Say one more time. It's definitely above more than 40 hours, like the normal amount that a normal person works, right? I, I don't believe I have ever worked 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe mm -hmm. any neurosurgeon would ever track <laughs> hours. Yeah. Um, so when you became a neurosurgeon, um, what were your emotions like when you got to perform your first surgery? No, in neurosurgery, there is not your first surgery. Mm -hmm. It is the transition is so smooth because what you're working is a brain or nervous system of a human being. First you watch and you don't even know when was the first time you watched it. Then mm -hmm. you're scrubbed in, then you touch, then you do a very little, there is not a one single case that you know the transition is so soft, so slow, that there is not a one single because who want to really do the first time cutting somebody's head open and expose mm -hmm. their brain? You don't want that. Yeah. If your patient doesn't mm -hmm. want that, your teacher don't want that, and definitely you don't want that. The mm -hmm. transition is so slow and gradual, there is no first time. The same thing that, you know, what was their first, egg or chicken? There is, that question is irrelevant. Yeah. 
but the emotion you have every time you do a new things, obviously your emotions are high. What you open up first time you open the skull, first time you cut in the skin, first time you um, have a bleeding, first time one of your patient dies, every mm -hmm. first has its emotional profile and impact on you. Mm -hmm. There are so many first times though. There's not one first mm -hmm. time. And then, so like in med school, like how would you practice like cutting into something? You mean how do you, in the med school? Well, mm, in the yeah, med in the medical. The first thing you cut is a mannequin or, or model. This mm -hmm. is, again, medicine, the threshold for mistake is so uh, low. The threshold to accept the mistake is so low that everything is uh, taught gradually in multiple layer with multiple layers of security and so on. So you just have to trust your med school to guide you in that. Don't try to make your own schedule. Let them, mm -hmm. let them guide you. Um, like what are some uh, like of your job duties as a neurosurgeon? Well, I see the patient. I uh, look at their films. I discuss their problem with them. I, most importantly, I make them understand what their problems are. And then I come up with a plan. I think uh, as a physician and a surgeon, we used to make the plan for the patient. Today is much better. We help them to understand and make a decision for themselves. We give them reasonable options and help them to understand what the consequences of those options are. And then once as a team, we come to a conclusion, then we take them to the surgery and help them to overcome a medical problem. So um, quick question, after your residency, is there like still like more training that you have to do? Or when you're residency, you just become a doctor? Every residency is different. In every residency, you get the exposure to many things. Um, I was lucky because I did the, the almost half a residency in Germany and done a full residency here. And I was in so many places that I in every place you get a set of tools in your toolbox. Now, after you are done with your residency, if you have the tools that you need in your toolbox, you are done. If you need more tools, you do a fellowship. You go to places where those things that you are interested, but weren't, you weren't exposed enough in your residency that you get exposed to them and add more to your skills. Probably one half to one third of this neurosurgeon, they do a fellowship. Half of them or more than half of them, they don't. Um. All right, so um, you told me before that this career takes up a lot of your time. Is it to the point where you do not have like time for your family and like hobbies, uh, things like that, or do you like have time? Well, um, you know, the life is made of 24 hours a day. Yeah. I don't understand the concept of not having time. Mm -hmm. You prioritize, you put priorities in your life and assign time to those things. And uh, so if somebody tells me that I didn't have time for tennis, that is nonsense. You have 24 hours time a day. You just didn't put tennis on the priority list. Now, certainly you have to put priority for your family and life and private life to some extent. But uh, if I'm, um, you want to have 40 hours week job, a job, neurosurgery is not for you. Mm -hmm. Then you have to prioritize, you know, that you go to a movie theater. I'm, I haven't watched TV for 12 years. I literally have not watched TV. 
because TV is not that I don't have time for TV. TV is not on my priority list. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Um, are, do you have like any recommendations of like, like extracurricular things to do in med school to make you like look more appealing to hospitals? Yeah, do research, do um, get involved in the science of it. Be, um, be a good community person, do good. Be a good person. That's all you need to be to make yourself more appealing to in any job, but more so in medicine, because uh, we need dedicated people. And um, so how, um, how many times uh, a, uh, a year do you need to like renew your license? Well, there is not only one license. There is a license to practice medicine in a state. That is usually done once a year or every two years. Then there is a license to or privileges in the hospital. That is done every two or three years. Then there is a license uh, to do your specialty. Like I'm a neurosurgeon. Officially that license has to be renewed every 10 years, but many places we do every year, we do something to keep that license going on. Any medical field, especially neurosurgery is a lifelong learning process. That process never stops. And um, so right now I'm in college and I am, I'm a freshman and I'm majoring in human, uh, human biology. Um, and I was wondering like, is there like a really good way to start like, um, well, like what should I start learning right now? So it will make it easier for me